Thanks, Nicole. The print stick looks like a great way to squeeze in that last minute draft after a late night cram session. When you're done studying and it's time to sit back, relax, and watch some TV, or watch a movie, you can still have a high quality HD screen in an already packed room. Let's take a look at four HD TVs that are a bit more appropriately sized for those with limited space. Hey, look, it's me. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm showing off some HD TVs, but I'm feeling a bit schizophrenic here. Let's get back on track. First up, we have the 32 inch Westinghouse SK32H540S. It lists for about $650, but you can always find that a little bit cheaper online or in the stores. This TV features two HDMI ports, one component video input. One of its cool features is an auto input sensing function. So when you turn on a new device, it will automatically switch to that desired port without you having to even pick up the remote. Kind of handy. The TV also features very good SD video processing, so your standard definition material is going to look pretty good. However, it suffered from terrible high definition video processing. You're still going to have a decent looking picture, but just knowing that in the back of your head that what it's doing to HD video is essentially incorrect and you are losing quite a bit of detail. Also, if you use the TV's component video input, there was loss of detail there as well. You really just want to stick to using HDMI input on the set for the best quality. In the lab, we measured an 813 to 1 contrast ratio. That's okay for a modern HD TV. And as with most Westinghouse TVs I look at, it exhibited good color quality and good consistency from light to dark detail. Another 32 inch flat panel LCD is the Sharp Aquas LC32 D44U. Has a $1,000 list price, but you can usually find it in the stores for about $650. This TV features two HDMI ports, two component video inputs, and it offers excellent HD video processing for your either cable or satellite sources. Also, the TV exhibits no overscan with high definition material, meaning that you're going to see every pixel on the screen where it should be. The TV also exhibited excellent contrast. I recorded that as being 1043 to 1, meaning that it's pretty darn good for a modern LCD. However, its range of color didn't quite match up with HD spec, meaning that there will be certain colors that this TV simply can't represent, but you might not even notice. The Toshiba Regza 32CV510U has a $900 list price. You'll find that cheaper online or in stores, of course. This TV features three HDMI inputs, two component video inputs, and an amazing contrast ratio of 25-25 to 1. That is superb for a 32-inch LCD HD TV. This TV also features excellent high definition video processing for superb detail. Its standard F processing was pretty good, but you know, not quite as impressive as its excellent HD processing. There were some color shifts in dark detail. This is a common characteristic for all LCDs. However, with this particular panel, it was a little bit more of the effect than I'd seen in other panels like it. And with its 26 inch screen, the Insignia NS LCD 2609 has a $500 list price, and this happens to be Best Buy's house brand LCD HD TV. You can only get it from them. It features two HDMI inputs, one component video input, and as every good HD TV should, it does not overscan its picture, meaning it doesn't stretch the image beyond the borders of the screen when you're using HDMI input. And compared to some 120 hertz LCDs I've seen that are good for motion performance, this 60 hertz panel had less smearing than some of those faster panels that I've seen before. Also, right out of the box, the picture quality was exceptionally well tuned, especially if you use its warm color temperature setting. Component video input was less impressive as there was overscan with every resolution and I noticed additional noise when using that input as well. And with a contrast ratio of about 798 to one on average, it falls right in line with other value price sets I've seen. Now the HD TVs we just talked about share some common features. One being screen resolution. They're all 1366 by 768 pixels. That's about half the resolution of a 1080p screen, but with TVs this size, particularly the smaller sets, it really doesn't matter that much, especially when you sit in an appropriate viewing distance. You really won't notice the additional detail of having more pixels on the screen. It's nice, but we're talking low cost here. Also, these TVs are equipped with VGA inputs, so if you have a computer and you want to feed it an analog video signal, you're good to go. However, if you want to use a digital input on the TV from a computer, you can always use one of the HDMI connections to get that done too. They work just fine. Also, these TVs include digital tuners, so when the transition occurs in February 2009, you're ready to go with an antenna. Or, 
If you have a cable connection and you don't want to use a box, these TVs will decode decrypted cable signals, meaning that you're not able to tune premium content without a cable box, but for the other channels, you're good to go. So even in a cramped space, you can still get a quality HD picture to dazzle your friends and burn a few hours between classes. These TVs are easier to move or fit into that awkward space and still have the functionality and quality of some of their larger cousins. Now, for a full detailed review of any of these TVs that I've shown, please visit PCMag.com.